Our beloved 8% Hard AF Seltzer is now live in over 1,200 locations across the United States. We're now available in Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, Ohio, and Texas. Go to hardafseltzer.com today, click on the store locator, enter your city or zip, and find the nearest location closest to you. Live from our studios in Austin, Texas, this is Drinking Bros Fake News with Ross Patterson, Dan Holloway, Papa G with the traffic. How you feel? Not good. Yeah? Field reporter, Hot Bob. And Delco Dan with sports. Welcome to Fake News. Yeah, welcome to Drinking Bros Fake News, everybody. Live from the Masters, right here in the good old state of Georgia. God, it's great to be home, isn't it? It's humid as fuck outside. <laughs> You're wearing the goddamn sweatshirt. Yeah. I came prepared. No, that's not prepared. Yeah. Wearing short sleeves and, and humidity doesn't do anything. Sure does. You're still it, hot. It makes me cooler. Uh, yeah, I'm not sweating as much. This is moisture wicking. Is it? Yeah. Never heard that term in my life. I think yeah. that's a lie. No. Eh, could be, could not be. Either way, happy to be here. Uh, going to the Braves game tonight. We are live uh, inside the Ivy Buckhead. Great fucking place. If you haven't been down here to rage, highly recommend it. Two floors on this fucking place. Look at the outside over there. My God, dude. Yeah. I could get loose in a place like this. A lot of buckhead related stuff. Buckhead as in a buck deer, like a male deer's head. Sure. Get it? You get it? Sure. That's no, what I the get the city's it. named for? I get it. So there's deer on the fucking walls. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the city that's trying to secede, too. We talked about this on uh, fake news a few weeks ago. Hopefully they do it. I love Buckhead uh, when I was in high school here, raging here, coming back for college and whatnot. They made me uh, a nice little Irish coffee here to start the day, which is very, very nice to them. Thanks for having us, guys. If you're in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, please check out the Ivy Buckhead. Also, uh, if you're in the state of Georgia, we got Hard AF Seltzer. Ryan Mills is back here. What do we got, Rye Guy? Yeah, buddy. Well, we've been working it, and we got a couple spots here I can tell you to go to. So the Vinings Bottle Shop off of Cobb Parkway. Okay. A ask for us there. Uh, Metro Bottle off of Marietta Boulevard. They got us. Go in there and rage. Minks off of Delk Road. And, of course, the Total Wine in Cobb Parkway. Go in there and rage. There it is. I was at uh, Total Wine by the hotel last night. Uh, there We bought them. We bought them out. So restock over there by Perimeter Mall. And, uh, and who's our little buddy over there? You want to give him a shout out? Yeah, yeah. we got Jay, Jason right here. He's working with us uh, down here in Atlanta. So you can hit us up or hit me up, and uh, we'll be in contact with him to get in your local spot, whatever it is. Absolutely. And Georgia Crown is our distributor here. If you want it in any of your locations, bars, restaurants, uh, even in your bathtub, hit up Georgia Crown, and they'll hook you up. All right, kids. Time to get to the news here. Top story, defund NPR. Uh, 87 to 0 is the number to remember here. An NPR editor uh, ended up blowing the whistle on the left-leaning outlets. Uh, bias coverage says the voter registration record showed an astonishing uh, disparity between Democrats and Republicans in the newsroom. And that number, well, it was 87 to 0. 80 seven people are registered as democrats zero are registered as republicans npr senior business editor yuri berliner penned a thorough rebuke of his own outlet for the free press published on tuesday criticizing it for telling listeners and readers how to think through a progressive worldview uh, he pointed in particular to its flawed coverage of the hunter biden laptop story russiagate 
and the COVID lab leak theory. And he also claimed NPR's leadership uh, that their reaction to the George Floyd killing in 2020 was to declare systematic racism was a given and uh, our mission was to change it. That's fun, isn't it? Mm. Uh, isn't NPR funded by us as taxpayers? Yes. Great. That's right, yeah. Great. Yeah, it's publicly funded. Um, Berliner said that the lack of viewpoint diversity has spilled over into how NPR covered such topics as the Israel-Gaza war, uh, and uh, they avoid terms like biological sex. This is from an editorial perspective. Okay. Um, he said he looked up the voter registration for NPR Newsroom in 2021 and found that in the city's headquarters of D.C., there were 87 total positions there, and all 87 people were registered Democrats. So, you know, it's easy to say that the media in America leans left. It's easy to say that our um, that taxpayer funding of things like this and three-letter agencies are completely captured by leftist knuckleheads, but this is li this is literal proof, right? Yeah, eighty-seven to zero is a big boy number there. Um, I look, I, I'm glad that it it came out. What I would like to see happen is uh, is an overall head count in every single one of these newsrooms. Um, L.A. Times, New York Times, Washington Post. I mean, it would be interesting. I think somebody has done that actually, and it's probably in the eighty percent range for news agencies. Um, but this is different because it's publicly funded, mm -hmm. right? P P uh, uh, NPR rather is not supposed to be editorializing politically, right? Right. That's not what. That's not at all what the fuck they're supposed to do. They're supposed to like promote the arts and shit like that right that Correct. that's that is literally their job that's like their charter is to do that but instead their charter is to deny that women are a real thing or whatever else, whatever other stupid goddamn bullshit that they're talking about yeah and i look the only thing that i'll say in regards to uh the people who are you know registered democrats and all that other shit i don't know if they they polled anybody else who was uh, undecided or declined do we know if uh anybody declined saying what party they were no in? he didn't ask people he looked on the voter registry database no shit so all 87 people that work there are democrats gotcha. all, literally every single one of them okay which uh, is uh you know it's a lot yeah a hundred percent of something is a lot of it. it it sure is but uh i know i can tell you this hollywood wise if you were caught as republican you'd probably be fired i guarantee it yeah um i Maybe not if you were caught, but if the public found out and somebody wrote a story about you, like, oh, the lone Republican at right. the Washington Post, you would definitely be gone. So what do you think but that, the rules should be here? Because we're doing DEI bullshit across the nation for all these jobs. If you're in the news, should it be 50-50? No, 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 no. The right of association is paramount to liberty. Nobody should ever be forced to do anything. Um, but there shouldn't be a publicly funded news agency what the fuck yeah that like the state just pays for news you don't and you don't think it's going to immediately turn into propaganda the goddamn private news is propaganda why wouldn't this be like our buddy uh my buddy rather tim she the one i told you he's a navy seal he's running for uh senate in montana mm -hmm. against that john tester twat right yeah uh just a, another dude that wants to send all of our money to israel and ukraine uh one of those guys <clears throat> So they found this old story about him and ran it on uh, uh, some dumb bitch. What's her name? Um, fuck, I don't remember her goddamn name. Some some cat hoarding white liberal middle aged woman. What's well, everybody? Quote unquote journalist uh, tried to run the story about him. Like, oh, he lied to police and did he really get a purple heart in the military and blah blah blah. There's this whole fucking story that was just made up, basically, right? And the real story was, if you look into it, and we, you can find this information on your own, but the real story is that <clears throat> he was protecting people who were still deployed mm -hmm. from some bullshit. So that's the real story. All you had to do was call him and ask. Right. Right? Or, or ask one of the dudes who was there at the time or whatever the fuck. I mean, he's got different citations for Purple Hearts that don't even include the incident she's talking about. So she's like, it, it's just, that's, that's what it is. The entire media apparatus and tech apparatus in America has become just another. It's like the the marketing department for the Democratic Party, essentially, right? Yeah. And it's like it's easy to find one-offs like Tim Shee or whatever, like Russiagate and 
uh, uh, whatever the fuck else individual examples. But then when you see that literally every person at not the private, but the publicly funded one mm -hmm. are all Democrats. So what do you think the privately funded ones are doing? They're definitely running people out of town if they don't share their same beliefs. hundred percent. I agree. And there's got to be a lot of people in these newsrooms uh, who are keeping it private, especially after something like this leaked. Uh, the only other outlet that I can think of that is publicly funded by taxpayers is PBS, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, they're doing like, uh, it's just like, Bigfoot or Bigfoot. Big Bird's got a giant cock now, right? Yeah. But they, they, they call a Big Bird a woman. Yes. It's like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, it's got a cock, but that doesn't mean anything anymore. No, you know it doesn't I mean? mean anything. Um, why these are still funded by the government, I have no idea. Why there's still a government. <laughs> well, that too, but uh, that's a bigger story, obviously. Um, but these two in particular in the media, why any media is funded by the government makes zero sense in today's world. Yeah. It's archaic, it's not useful, and uh, there's certainly better places where you can put that money right now. Um, PBS, shit, I think they just run like Austin City Limits on like Saturday nights and stuff like that, where, to go back to what you said, it's a lot of the arts, um, and that's what it used to be about. Uh, NPR, you know, runs news all goddamn day long, that's what they do. Uh, but you certainly got to switch it up or just dump it all together. I'd be curious to see what the ratings even are on NPR if, and if that justifies a huge uh, budget from the government at all. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, NPR's operating revenue in 2022 was $316 million. For what? Yeah, wh like, where is that going exactly? I don't, I don't know. Um, because they're not doing video. I know they're in podcasting, and they've got uh, a ton of big podcasts and stuff like that. But let's face it, so do we. Um, so why are they funding? Why is the government funding it more in particular? Tax taxpayers uh, funding it? It doesn't really make sense at this point, um, especially in 2024. Here, that's a big boy budget, though. Yeah. Who's getting paid on that? <laughs> I don't fucking know, dude. Because I, I don't know any of the hosts or anything. Everybody's uh, pretty much just got a very quiet yeah. cat voice. What's that one turd's voice from All Things Considered? Oh, yeah. Shit. My wife, my wife liked that show. I don't know why. That's the only one left, yeah. Uh, but other than that, you can pretty much dump it. And look, the ad dollars should pay for itself. Who gets that ad revenue? Does the government get it? Um, I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah, because... If they are, then cut the budget for that and then have NPR be its own standalone and then just nuke out the budget as far as what taxpayers are paying. That doesn't really make any sense to me. Uh, but a lot of people were, were hopping on social media with the hashtag defund NPR. Yeah, well, this is what you get in a fucking uh, failing republic is the government buys the media with your money mm -hmm. and then makes them lie to you about everything yeah like that's how you know you're in late stage fucking republic you don't you mean you don't want to see another ukraine story on 60 minutes to lead off for the 90th week in a row yeah stoking the the flames for more money and uh oh yeah and a potential war here or i mean and, it, and it's not limited just to uh, i mean the stupidity permeates through all of media to be honest like uh earlier this week or maybe it was over the weekend uh shapiro was talking about <clears throat> how the Biden administration wanted, before giving more money to Israel, they wanted some guarantees that they weren't going to attack civilian populations or some bullshit like that. Mm -hmm. um, it, and maybe it was over the top. I don't really know what the details were. But uh, Ben Shapiro's response was, you can't tell them how to prosecute their war, basically. Like, well, we can't if we're giving them money, yeah. And then he said, his conclusion was that the White House is now captured by Hamas. Because we don't want to send money to Israel. That means okay. we're captured by the White House is captured by Hamas. Like, eh, that might be a little bit of an overreaction, Ben. Just a little bit. You may be thinking with, I don't know, your your little hat. Your your fucking brain. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say for me with with uh, in regards to Israel for Ben Shapiro, uh, look, he's all in. Anybody. Well, he's it or doesn't he's eligible to join the IDF right now. Is he really? Yeah, if you would like. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Could. Go take your birthright. Go join the IDF, Ben. He go could ahead. he could definitely do it. Um, but with all this shit, uh, we gotta start knocking this down. I imagine if Trump got in there, he'd he'd nuke out NPR at this point. 
Uh, nobody's even listening to radio either. <clears throat> no, why would you? I, so it doesn't really make any sense. Um, hopefully they get rid of it. Next up, Chechnya is a fun place to live. Authorities in the Russian Republic of Chechnya have announced a ban on music that they consider too fast or too slow. Minister of Culture, do they have that over there? Uh, a minister of culture? I want to be the minister of culture. Oh, yeah. We need one in this country. I just want to be for my city. I don't want to, I think locally, and then I, I obviously, um, you know, expand globally there. But uh, I just want to go in my city and then, and then bump that up. Uh, the minister of culture, Musa Dadyev. It doesn't oh, matter. Give me these names. It doesn't. This, these names. Chechnya is a fucking bullshit place on earth. So just, just get past it. It is. Uh, he or she, no idea, announced the decision to limit all musical, vocal, and choreographic compositions to a tempo ranging from 80 to 116 beats per minute. At a meeting Friday, the Russian state uh, new agency TASS reported, I have announced the final decision, agreed with the head of the Chechen Republic, of Ramzan, you fucker. I'm not reading the rest of that. Go ahead, too. give it a shot. Ramzan Akmaktovich. Kad uh, Akmaktovich. Akmaktovich. I'm not doing any of that yeah. shit. Uh, that from now on, <laughs> all musical, vocal, and choreographic works must correspond to a tempo of 80 to 116 beats per minute. Uh, under Kadrov's directive, the, uh, the region now ensures that Chechen musical and dance creations align with a Chechen mentality and musical rhythm, aiming to bring to the people and to the future of our children the cultural heritage of the Chechen people. How funny would it be if we passed a law in the U.S. where you could only listen to the theme song from the Dukes of Hazard? That's the only song you could listen to. Just a good old boy. Making the way. Um, You're on the way we know how. So the ban will mean that any songs and mu musical styles such as pop or techno will be banned, right? Fuck uh, that. So and and then this is kind of a maybe a separate story, but I I think it's related. Uh, just stay with me. Okay. Um, in early 2017, the UN human rights experts, uh, UN human rights experts, urged authorities to investigate allegations that gay men were being targeted and detained, and uh, local media reported that some had been murdered for their uh, gayness. And then, well, gay men do love techno. Yeah, well, so do I. let me get there. So another wave of anti-gay persecution was reported in January 2019 when activists said dozens of men and women were detained and at least two died in custody. So I think it's probably safe to say that Chechenians believe techno music leads to butt sex. Yes. And I don't know that I disagree with that on a factual level. I don't like, you shouldn't be restricting what people are doing. But the fact that if you listen to enough techno music, you're going to get drilled in your butthole, I think is a distinct possibility. I, the, I think it is. The last time I had gay butthole sex with a man, I believe I was playing Daft Punk. No. Um, it was the last album, right? You know, they retired after that, obviously. But it still holds up to this day if you listen to it front to back. What I was hoping that would come from this was by the time, because this story came out on Tuesday, I think, uh, or no, on Monday. Of this uh, week, yeah. Yeah, I was hoping that by now somebody on Twitter or somewhere would have found a bunch of songs that are super fucked up between 80 and 116 beats. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this legal in Chechnya. Yeah. And then make a whole album. We should make a gay country album and make it 80 to 116 beats per minute and put uh, uh, legal in Chechnya on the, is the name of the fucking album. Beyonce just did it. Uh, so that exists right now in the world. What? Yeah. Yeah. It's not her country album is not gay. Yeah, it's just pretty gay. Have no. you listened to I it? mean it's gay because she's a chick, yeah, but it's pretty gay. What's the gay part? <sighs> Throw on the post Malone song. That's all I'll say. She I mean you do out with post Malone on there. It is Are they talking about sucking dudes, sucking cops? Great, pretty close. I don't think that's pretty accurate. fucking close. Listen to that album. Pop it on, dude, and tell me that's not a gay country album. Uh if there ever is one. But uh with this don't they believe in like fucking manhood and all that other shit? So they're trying to eliminate uh, gayness from the culture. I'm being serious. I mean, that. they're Muslims, right? Yeah. In Chechnya. So chances are they're also, yes, publicly mm -hmm. and culturally, but also raping little boys. I mean, that's kind of common in that but culture. But they don't so. look at that as gay. No, that's just, you know, 
It is what it That's is. That's Tuesday yeah. for those guys. Thursday, but, uh, technically. But yeah, yeah, but the rest of it, um, this makes sense to me. And uh, and I'm not kidding when I say this. I think there is something to that um, where you eliminate house music and that's where, you know, a lot of gay dudes get to uh, party, fuck, take some drugs, mm-hmm. have some fun over <laughs> there. Uh, if they can nuke that out, maybe slow it down. I want to say probably Chechnya is a, a polka country. Um, hold on. I'll find a Chechen song. I'm going to go hardcore aggressive polka. That's just off the top of my brain. I'll find one right now. Hang on. Yeah. I would love to hear. We, I think we're on YouTube today, so we can't play that. But uh, they'll ding us. Do you think they've got copyright over there for that? I know. Do you think they'll ding us? No Chechnya? way, right? They might block us in Chechnya. I got blocked for, uh, God, what did I get blocked for? Uh, the Top Gun theme song on a video on Instagram in Russia and Russia yeah. only. Russia does block a lot. They block a ton of shit that's American. Especially if it's pro, you know, fucking. They'll block all of that. Uh, so anything gay or techno or any of that shit, yeah, they'll block it. What's up? Oh, that sounds like Mohican music. A little bit. Like classical guitar. A little bit. Yeah. Um, That's one of those, uh, gra- grab the potatoes from the, the, the bottom floor and br- bring them up the stairs. We made two gallons of cold soups. Was drinking fucking warm vodka, listening to that. Warm bullshit. vodka and cold soup. That's why they're fucking mad. It has yeah. nothing to do with religion, to be honest. Sure doesn't, dude. Uh, but free the techno music. God damn it, dude. If... Uh, Man, it's tough because we lost some of our, our greatest here. Who's the one who fucking killed himself? Uh, Yammer Yager. No, that's a no, hockey player. Different guy. Very much still alive. Yeah. yeah. Who is the guy who sliced open his wrist with the glass? Took a, a pill in Ibiza. Well, no, that Avicii. was... Avicii. It was Avicii. Posner, yeah. Posner was on our show. No, Posner was on the show. Yeah, but he, but he wrote was the talking song about Avicii. Him, yeah. And uh, Avicii was the one who sliced his wrist open. In Oman... And he was very pro-gay. So this is very disrespectful to him. Change the rules over there. This is what I really want to advocate for. I don't really give a shit about Ukraine and everything else, but I, I definitely don't want to not have techno music over there. Because mm. let's say I go gay later in life. I want the option to go to Chechnya, find a, you know, a 54-year-old who smells like uh, cigars and, and warm vodka, and just give it a go on his asshole later in life. But I can only do that if I have techno music. Again, I've never had gay sex without techno music, okay? I just don't do it. Shit. Sorry, man, I got caught up. No, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, you know, when in Rome. Yeah, Ryan, uh, bring me a, a hard AF seltzer. The, uh, the Irish coffee is, uh, is gone over here. It's time to get weird. Uh, first up is our title sponsor, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Cheers, brother. Cheers, brother. 50% off everything in the entire store at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros with the promo code drinking bros at checkout. That's everything. That's the mattresses. That's the sheets. That's the pillows, that's the adjustable bases, mattresses for RVs, the covers, dude. If you're having gay butt sex, Chechnya, put a cover down on that mattress. I mean, I would recommend pulling out slowly, but mistakes happen, right? They do. And that's why you want that mattress protector, because you don't want shit and blood all over your mattress. Let's be classy about it. I call it DJ. That's Dookie Juice. Yeah, well. You don't want a little DJ on the white mattress. There's blood in there, too. Uh, probably. I mean, if you're doing it right... If it's Meek Mill and uh, and Diddy, yeah, there's there's you're lucky we're not in the in studio that. right Thank now. Thank God, dude, and that's why I said it because I can't hear it. I don't have headphones on today. I, I made Rob bookmark that. It's yeah, like, we're live down here in the Masters, and there's nothing you can do about it, Delco. <laughs> so you can't play it. I can't hear it, and, uh, that's and I'm what glad you think. about it. You want me to right. play it right now? Sure can't. I can't hear it, dude. Mm. Too far across the bar. Yeah. All right, can't hear it. Don't don't bother. But if you're out there at home, and let's say you are a gay man. Maybe you're in Chechnya. Maybe you're here in San Fran or hiding out in St. Louis. You know, maybe you're in a small town in Alabama and you're looking to bone your lover on a beautiful brand new bedroom set. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Pillows are incredible. Bed is incredible. That adjustable base, 
You can throw away. What's the, the triangle thing, the fuck pad that uh, people bone on? Oh, a liberator. Yeah. 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 You don't need it with an adjustable base. You can yep. jack it up, dude, and get in those positions. You can put it in book mode and then write a little story across her chest and face. Or his. Either way. Either way. Right. Okay, because we're not banning techno on this show, yeah. right? The, the way I like to do it is uh, build train tracks leading right up to the butthole. Oh, really? And then I'll drop my nuts into one of those little uh, carts, uh-huh. the kind of like you carry metal stones or whatever the fuck, sure. and I just drive that thing right in. I have a, I hire a little Asian to build the tracks because mm. I don't want to do that. I no, I, can, I don't know how. Tracks. Yeah. I don't know how. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not going to presume to know better at that than they would. Obviously. No, me neither. No. Me neither. But I'm sure GhostFed's going to be stoked about this. <laughs> Head on over to GhostFed.com forward slash drinking bros. Say, load up the cart. Put as many items as you want in there. All of it is 50% off. And then, boom, at checkout, you're going to see uh, a three-year page. You go program no interest as long as you have decent credit over there. Stretch it out, dude. It's like uh, the men in Chechnya are stretching out that butthole. Yeah. We knew that was coming, right? We knew, we knew I was going to say that today. Um, and then if, you're, if you have a, like a debilitating disease or terminal cancer or something like that, that three-year program is great. Because uh, then you can leave that debt to somebody else over the years. Mm. Whatever. Ghostbed set it up. So exploit it. If you're not doing well, you might as well spend the last year of your life in comfort over there. Head on over to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Promo code drinking bros at checkout will get you 50% off. Next up, inflation is down. <laughs> Kidding. It's not. It's nowhere near down. No, it's up. Yeah, sure is. It's up. Sure is. Unexpectedly uh, is what is it? CNBC said. Was that unexpected yeah. to you? Yeah. No lie. We're doing uh, taxes this week. Obviously, uh, Monday, April 15th is tax day. It's not been fun. Never is around the old studio here. That's why we got out of town, to be honest with you. Um, looking at the numbers of grocery bills, uh, gas, um, everything that has gone up, I looked at my bill last week and compared it to like a year ago um, and still the same, still the same. Like mm-hmm. the numbers keep going up. Yeah. Fast food keeps getting fucking higher. I know we've talked about that ad nauseum on this fucking show. <clears throat> but every time we go out of town is when we start eating fast food and all that other shit. I'm like, God we've, damn. Dude. We've got a story. We can do it next, actually. Yeah, we'll that, do it after this. It's the last story. Yeah. Uh, but inflation is, uh, is actually up as of today. Uh, the consumer price index accelerated at a faster than expected pace in March pushing inflation higher and likely dashing hopes that the Federal Reserve will be able to cut interest rates anytime soon. I don't agree with that, actually. Um, I think it doesn't really matter. We're seven months from the election right now. He doesn't have a choice but to cut this fucking shit. We'll see. I mean, if he does and wins and we push into a depression from the recession that we're clearly in right now, Mm -hmm. then... He's fucked, right? Is he? Because they won. Democrats won. They'll get the next four years. No, because they'll lose. The, the The Republicans will do everything they can to jam shit up, and they'll lose the midterms badly. Like, a bunch of old statesmen will get will lose their positions in Congress and Senate, or in the House and Senate because of it, so you can't take that chance. To be I honest. used to think it mattered, and mm-hmm. I, I used to think that was the case. Not anymore. You've got so many fucking dummies um, it mat- running it mattered on- in 2010 like when the tea party came in they flipped like 100 seats that's right. that's why because but- obama fucked up uh, obama didn't even do it it was george w bush who fucked up the economy and obama was just sitting on it at the time when right he got fucked up basically but whatever but in my opinion um if you look at the guys who are running now some of them are still republican wise mm-hmm. some of them are still they want funding for ukraine mm-hmm. funding for israel and all that other shits and I wouldn't vote for them. If they're in my fucking district, I wouldn't vote for these motherfuckers in November. No, me either. So I think it's shifting a little bit, uh, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, the so, CPI, a broad yeah. measure of goods and services costs uh, across the economy, rose 0.4% for the month, putting the 12-month inflation rate at 3.5% or uh, 0.3 percentage point higher than in February. The Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics Uh, Reported Wednesday, economists surveyed by uh, Dow Jones had been looking for a 0.3 gain and a 3.4 year-over-year level. 
Uh, so again, this is these numbers are fake. They're way lower than what they should be because the next sentence says, excluding volatile uh, food and energy components. So why the things that people need, right? Yep. This is a, a relatively recent um, thing that's happened. It's one of those manufacturing consent phrases that have happened. The uh, right used to be really good at it. Not so much anymore, but the left is getting really good at it. Phrases like inflation is transitory. All, all, they're, all you're doing is you have, think of it from a marketing perspective. You have this army of retards on Twitter, social media, out in public even. All you have to do is give them a, a simple phrase they can use mm -hmm. whenever anybody recites the actual data to them. Like, oh, well, actually, inflation is transitory, so it's going to be fine. Like, no, it's not. Nobody's ever said that before in the history of economics, right? And but but all the fucking most people don't pay that much attention and they rely on the news or people they know to to whether they know that or not to feed into their epistemology about what the fucking reality is in political America right now. And all you have to do as one of the major parties is give your firebrand people dumb little phrases that appear to the to the ignorant to negate whatever the person just said mm -hmm. and that's what this is it, th this this excluding volatile food and energy components you mean two things that everybody needs to stay alive yep energy and food well the other uh, problem with this is they also I, removed housing from this by yeah the i was going to say correct me if i'm wrong but uh food energy and housing these three components it's like the three most important ones right but they they were only removed during this administration. That's correct, yes. It has never happened before under any other president. Nope. No. And so we just changed the definition. We changed the definition of what a recession was as well. Right. Right. After the third consecutive quarter of of negative growth, that's a recession. Mm -hmm. Um just that's how we've always categorized a recession before. And uh they're like, no, we're not that's not tech technically we're not in a recession and here's why. They just made up some bullshit. Yeah. Right. So th this is just another one of them. Um, so this number is 3.5. Uh, it's more like fucking 5.7, I think, for this current 12-year period. And since the beginning of the Biden administration, I think it's up at 20%, which, yeah. again, we did this a couple of weeks ago, but Trump's cumulative was less than 3% per year. It was like 2.4% per year, which is under the average, mm -hmm. even including all the shit that happened in 2020 with COVID. Yeah. Uh, and I know it says that, that stocks slumped after the report, but... To me, the stock market these days uh, is only for the rich. I don't oh, yeah. know anybody else. Uh, like, you know, obviously people have 401ks and all that other shit uh, that they're locked into. Some of them can't get out of it, depending upon what company they're in. But uh, the stock market today, I don't know normal people who have money in the stock market. They have like maybe 401k tied up in an index somewhere but they don't track any of that bullshit. but that's it yeah. right um the rest of it is just the rich well it's what money can represent too because i don't give a fuck about the stock market what money represents is satisfying maslow's hierarchy of needs right mm -hmm. shelter food warmth whatever the fuck energy now we would call it energy right but uh to to the idea that we're systematically excluding the things that keep you alive from what it costs to stay alive is the dumbest shit that I've ever seen. And I can't believe that that's like, I wouldn't allow, if I was a member of Congress or a Senator, that I wouldn't allow a Democrat to talk to me without bringing that up ever. Like any point they made of like, you guys changed the definitions of all these economic terms to make it look like you're doing better than you're doing. But the reality is people are suffering. And here's how we know, because these things you tried to exclude from the CPI, fucking food right that yeah. people eat is way up and you're fucking like so the measure for uh meat fish poultry and eggs climbed by one percent just in fucking one month yep. it went up one percent in one month a 4.6 jump in egg prices in one month butter f actually fell five percent um <clears throat> But uh, food away from home increased by 0.3, which means less people are buying groceries and they're going to fast food restaurants and ordering bullshit food. Now, speaking of that, we can go on to this next story. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but a viral social media video about a $25 McDonald's deal recently sparked an online debate about California's minimum wage increases. Mm. Right. 
Uh, and the reason is fast food. We've talked about it. Delco was talking about it yesterday, actually, about how fast food prices have gone up everywhere. Yeah. And they have gone up everywhere, but not anywhere near what's happening in fucking California right now. Correct. It's double almost what any other part of the country is. Yeah. Uh, so a viral social media video about a $25 McDonald's deal recently sparked an online debate about California's minimum wage increase. A TikTok user who posts videos under the username at Shannon underscore Montepaya shared the video on March 27th. She was in the drive through of a Southern California McDonald's location when she saw a sign for a 40 piece chicken McNugget deal, uh, which also included two large fries. I know you're a huge fan of that. Mm. Uh, the price of the meal bundle was $25.39, including sales tax. Uh, it would come to roughly $27. In the video, the social media user uh, lamented that the meal didn't even include a drink. Uh, the price of the meal bundle was $25.39, including sales tax. And uh, after that, you couldn't even throw in like a medium Sprite. Holy crap. Uh, is what she said. While the meal is designed to serve four people, it demonstrates how food prices at the fast food chain have risen over the years. A recent study by Finance Buzz found that McDonald's prices have increased by 100% since 2014. While the meal is designed to, to serve four people, uh, the video ended up uh, amassing 2 million views, bringing thousands of TikTok users to the comments section many of whom are nostalgic about McDonald's prices. So Delco and I talked about this on the way over uh, regarding the nuggets. Uh, I don't remember having a 40 count as a child. However, uh, the McChicken sandwich used to be 99 cents and it was on the dollar meal uh, or the dollar menu, forgive me. Um, what is that up to now? Three fifty or $4 for just a sandwich? No, it's like five bucks for a sandwich now. No, it's two eighty nine. dollars For which one? For a fucking McChicken? Yeah, yeah. two eighty nine. But it's still itself, three. Right? That's still three times what it was. Yeah, yeah. three times. I mean, <clears throat> that's fucking crazy to me. Well, see, that's the thing though. Uh, price, McDonald's prices across the country have gone up a hundred percent since twenty fourteen. Inflation has only gone up thirty four percent since mm -hmm. twenty fourteen in ten years. Right. You want to? Uh, so wanna you're, you're going a hundred percent. You want to do and me a favor and look the at way, the stock price for McDonald's? Yeah, that's not that's not CPI by the way. That's not the inflation. The re the true inflation number is just how much a dollar is worth, um, and that's gone up thirty four percent. For some reason, food, and housing and energy are all outpacing the dollar inflation, right? Mm -hmm. Which does mean that people are gouging the fuck out of us. Like the you you say what you want to about the free market shit, and I'm a supporter of that, but. Don't be fooled. Don't think that these corporations give two fucks about you. They're raising prices in a time of emergency and using the emergency to codify that. And then they will never bring those prices back down after it's done. Ever. 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 Right? So, but this, this one is uh, a little bit different because California is unique from every, every other state right now as far as, um, as far as this goes. So, um, social media users turned to recent legislation in California that increased the uh, minimum wage for fast food workers from $16 an hour to $20 an hour. Uh, people were like, what, that, this is a new normal. But then people started chiming in from different parts of the country. So a Florida resident said, 50 nuggets here is 15 bucks. Uh, and then it's 619 in Dallas for 20 piece and two large fries, which makes sense. So, yeah, that's reasonable. So a 20 piece and two large fries, two of those in Texas would cost you, let's say 15 bucks with tax. That's mm -hmm. $10 less than California. So yeah, pay people, fucking $20 an hour to work the fry machine at McDonald's and see what happens. Here's what happens. Mc food costs go up for actual human beings that buy food. McDonald's stock price goes way the fuck up. Yep. The end. Yep. Right? Like it doesn't do anything for actual human beings because it, the, the people who work in lower wage jobs like that typically patronize the, the business. For example, there was a study done about Walmart several years ago 30% of their full-time employees were on some form of government assistance, welfare from the state or the federal government. And then I think something like 80% of them regularly shopped at Walmart. This is the free market. This is 
the company store. I've me- I've mentioned this before, right? I sold my soul to the company store. It's an old song yep. about how uh, big corporations unregulated fuck people over. Now, the regulation that we would prefer to see is a better corporation that comes in and says, you know what, we're not going to fuck people over, so why don't you come work for us or you come buy from us or whatever the fuck. But the government doesn't allow that. They make the tax code impossibly complicated. Mm-hmm. They make every possible, anybody like Walmart donating to, to people in, in Congress so that they'll make things, the barrier to entry to compete with them as high as fucking possible so they can never fucking compete with them. That's what they do. Yeah, and so for me personally, uh, McDonald's, let's just take McDonald's. Um, I used to own stock in McDonald's. Uh, I don't own stocks anymore. Um, back to that inflation story that we did right before this, I sold almost all my stocks uh, right around uh, the first year after Biden got in because inflation got too high. I actually wanted some of that money in real life to pay for food and energy and all the things that we're fucking bitching about here that aren't magically in this uh, CPI index. Now, let's just take McDonald's uh, stock. So last year, this same day last year, uh, April 25th, actually, so about 15 days earlier last year, McDonald's. Q1 earnings surpass Wall Street, aided by menu price increases. Mm -hmm. That was a year ago. Um, Next one, McDonald's earnings up again. Grimace is boosting the sales. Also, food's gone up over there at McDonald's. Uh, And then boom, another beat for McDonald's here for for Q3. So last year, their 52-week low stock price was 245. Right now, it's at 302. And it's hovering right around, uh, uh, their 52-week high was 302. Right now, it's hovering right around 269. There's no fucking way they're dropping these prices no. ever again. Nope. Uh, <clears throat> there's just absolutely no way. So I guess the question is, what's gonna, is it going to be famine or violence or some other private corp- corporation of some sort or some other strategy going to step in and alleviate the stress on lower-income people who are trying to feed their families? That, like it's going to be one of those three things uh, and maybe some combination of both because when people start to starve to death, you're definitely going to start seeing crime go up. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's people like even Jesus said, who among you would, uh, if your son said he was hungry, give him stones. You know what I mean? Like that's not going to happen. I never people said are, that, by the way. Well, you're not Jesus. Uh, Debatable. Except me, I'm Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah, there's no, uh, th- there's no good solution to this except for another company going in the other direction or, or people just making themselves independent from the current food chain in America, right? Because you're getting, it's poisoning you anyways, to be honest. Um, it is, I, let me ask you this, a serious question. What did you eat when you were poor? Do you remember? Fucking Pop-Tarts and frozen shit. So did I, McDonald's, I would get pizza. Uh, Ramen, sp- like not spam, but bologna, shit like that. When I remember I when up. I moved to Los Angeles, my, mm-hmm. uh, me and my best friend from school, um, we were so poor that initially we would just order one large pizza. It was mm-hmm. five bucks down the street. And then we would split that. And it was horrific. I mean, luckily there was two bathrooms in that place. Uh, Cause we were, it was just an absolute fucking paint job on that yeah. porcelain. But um, uh, that's what you do when you're poor. Now, yeah. When you jack up the prices like this and people can't even go to the grocery store and that's the choice between McDonald's and the grocery store, then you're having a fucking country full of obesity, yeah. which brings a host of other fucking issues But there's a, here. there's a ceiling to this problem, right? Because as the more, let's call it more convenient food or uh, uh, high calorie but new, low nutrition food, as the prices start to become commensurate with regu- just like meat that you can buy on the internet, like Moink, f- bo- Moink box, box. Yep. for example, um, then Moink box takes that market share mm-hmm. at some point, which is not a bad thing, but it, and, and maybe that's what it is. Maybe, maybe uh, this is just a natural economic cycle where massive corporations have gotten too big and they've stopped providing the value that you need. So they reach a point of inflation where the, the higher quality service it's commensurate price-wise, and people go back to that, and then that business grows, and the price comes down on that maybe, right? Or at least stays under inflation for some some years so people can catch up a little bit. That does happen from time to time, and it would be a good thing if that were the case because every single one of these direct-to-consumer DTC meat companies, like all of them are 
getting sourcing from private farms right mm -hmm. now at least it's like tillamook cheese they all get from this like six dairy farmers i think or something like that that provide all the the milk for tillamook one of them is our buddy um uh that's been on the show Derek before yep um yeah but maybe it'll maybe that this but that's what i'm saying some new infrastructure for getting calories into people's stomachs is going to have to pop up soon because this shit is not going to last no and the other part about this that nobody's talking about is the food has gotten smaller oh, so yeah. like the, the patties on yeah. uh go, go buy a big mac and look at the size of the patty pull up that bun and look at the size of a fucking patty on there it, it ain't what it used to be either, and it's fucking triple the goddamn price. So, Shrinkflation. I, I, yeah, so I can't, I can't figure out. You got record profits, but the food is also shrinking uh, in the meantime for McDonald's and, and the rest of these restaurants here. So what's the real fucking answer behind the scenes? Like, I want that real answer. Well, the real answer is that um, service economies are typically dead ends to some degree, right? Like you, if your entire economy is based on, not entire, but let's just say a good portion of your economy is based on people serving other people who can afford their service, then you eventually trend towards feudalism to some degree. The people who have been successful or come from successful families will be able to afford more services or whatever the fuck else, and other people will get priced out of that market as time goes on and they have to join the service industry right mm -hmm. that that's just how it goes there's a gravity to that shit um because we don't make anything right yeah like how do you how are we introducing new money into the american economy from the global economy right now now we export a lot of stuff the government and big corporations export a lot of stuff but how's the average individual and what i mean by that is <clears throat> the stuff we're exporting is we export a lot of oil some corn wheat stuff like that we have other exports as well but i mean like are we building cars that are getting sold somewhere else are we building products of some some type fucking denim jeans or something we used to wrangler used to provide the entire world denim jeans right oh yeah even we russia did, yeah we just don't smuggle it in yeah we just don't make anything anymore so adding adding uh, uh foreign wealth to our economy isn't really happening anymore right so at some point that $20 an hour worker becomes a $30 an hour worker, but they're still doing the same job, which means the value of their product now goes way up, but does it? Like the value hasn't changed. As a matter of fact, the quantity of it goes down a little bit and the price triples, like he said. That's not like, that. in no way is that sustainable for an economy to do that. And by the way, I like McDonald's. Um, what they've done to the American people, because something doesn't make sense here. Food is getting smaller. Prices are getting higher. They've got record prices in the stock. So it's not like they're taking a hit mm. on their business side. They're fucking us over. And it sucks because I like McDonald's. Um, but none of this is sustainable. I'm just curious as if, like you said, we don't enter this uh, phase, this new phase of American food where we are buying Moink Box. We are buying jakesteaks.com. We're doing yeah. that. So, because I, like, I found myself over the last three years stocking up my freezer full of you know 50 60 pounds of meat whenever uh you know the shipments come in i'll just stock it up because i don't know what the prices are going to be in the future mm. uh and it's also cleaner and better for me and you really do feel better eating it um so hopefully that starts a revolution towards that and not just cheaper <laughs> options for different fast food restaurants for america yeah or like pellets you know i mean that's that's the Companies like Moink Box or Jake Steaks or people like that is the positive pathway out of this. Yep. But the negative pathway is fucking soil and green and shit. You know what I mean? Or like, is that Because that's, that's what that, the government solution will be the most efficient solution, which, by the way, is not always the most humanitarian solution. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's efficient to uh, just let some people die, frankly, right? Sure. It, it's that's how Russia and China had like the 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 cultural revolution and all like the 60 or so million people who died in China under Mao. It wasn't just they, they weren't lining up millions of people at a time and blowing their brains out. They starved them to death. Right. Because it was like, well, we're not going to fucking play your little game, you peasant. Yeah. So you can you can just starve. Right. This food's for us or whatever. We're not going to let you do this or farm this or whatever. Um, They're also morons. Right. Like oh, Mao, yeah. the Chinese government. Yes. Yeah, Mao was like, "Oh, the sparrows are eating four pounds a 
each sparrow of like wheat mm. and didn't realize they were taking out all the locusts. Yeah. So they killed all the sparrows. And then the locusts killed all the crops. And then the locusts took out all the crops. Yep. Yeah. So a lot of it was incompetence as well. You know, it's like that's what happens when the government gets involved. It's either nefarious bullshit or abject incompetence. Well, like, what the fuck does the government do well? Go to the DMV and then tell me that you want them controlling your food supply. Are you out of your goddamn mind? Yeah, the other video I saw uh, in regards to TikTok on this was uh, somebody compared taking Ozempic or I think it was semaglutide, uh, $50 for a shot every week. But what they were saying was, I'm only eating once a day, so that's knocking out two meals that I don't have to pay for anymore. Oh, yeah, and then you're going to so die in your 50s. $50 is worth it. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll die in your 50s because you're malnourished. You know, the number one, the number one characteristic somebody can have uh, to up their chances of surviving cancer is lean muscle mass. That is the number one predictor of survivability of cancer is lean muscle mass, not your diet, not how much you work out. Like, cause some people just have that naturally, right? Skinny mm -hmm. white dudes with big dicks, for example. Yeah. Um, but lean muscle mass and what is Ozempic does is stops you from growing muscle essentially. Right. Yeah. Like you're going to get skinny, but it's, it, it's, you're not growing like muscle, right? It's not good for you over time. Like it's good. It can be good in short periods to, in the same way people talk shit about steroids all the time. Taking uh, 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 an antibiotic steroid plus tran and clen together, you can fucking make some progress. Not You're not going to look shredded all the time afterwards, but you could definitely build base like that. Yeah, like for, for sure. sure. And you can do the same thing with Ozempic. But if you're staying on it for like years at a time you're fucking your body up big time yeah you know what i mean i don't know if i would recommend that solution anyway but it's cheaper i and i understand it uh when homegirl posted the video and ran the numbers i was like all right it makes sense versus what you're paying for in food but again not part of the cpi our Ooh. next sponsor is mybookie.com promo code drinking bros doubles that first deposit all the way up to a thousand dollars we're live down here from the masters uh, Delco, who you got in the Masters on MyBookie.com? Well, if you watched the uh, Delco Dan's Dirty Golf picks from yesterday, you would know and hopefully got those picks in mm -hmm. because the Masters has already started. But we're in on Tiger Woods to make the cut. We're in on Will Zalatoris, Xander Shoffley, and Sahith Thagala to win. We also, you know, maybe he can get a good number on Scotty because his wife's about to get pregnant or give birth to a baby. So who knows? Would he really lead? I, I saw that story uh, this morning that he, even if he was leading, he said, he would leave the tournament to go see the birth of his child versus winning a Masters. I got to think it's the situation, right? If it's Sunday and he's up by five, does he do it? <laughs> That's a flex, though, if you do. It is. I mean, people would remember that forever if you just fucking bounce. It's the reverse ROM when he got COVID at the BMW, I think, a couple years ago. Yeah, and they pulled him off the yeah. course. Yeah. Uh, it would be a baller move. Uh, right now on mybookie.com, uh, subscribe to Drinker Bros Sports. It's a separate RSS feed for the podcast. Uh, I've got Brooks Kapka uh, at 20 to 1 over there on mybookie.com. I've got uh, Joaquin Neiman at 25 to 1 to win as well. And then Wyndham Clark at 30 to 1 before the season started on Delco Dan's Dirty Golf Picks over there in Drinking Bros Sports. I did bet on John Rahm. He's currently at 11 to 1. Scheffler's the favorite. It's uh, plus 375 right now, which is roughly three and a half close to four to one over there. And then Rory McElroy is at nine and a half to one. Big boy tourney, one of my favorites, uh, amped to be here. Shout out to my bookie uh, for having us down here. Uh, hoping to get John Daly tomorrow, but we'll see uh, if the weather holds out or not. Uh, supposed to rain on the first day, so you can get these bets in uh, on the second day as well. And you might get better odds. So let's say Scotty starts off to a, a slow start. You want to head on over to my bookie and get better odds than plus 375. You can do that. Tons of stuff to bet on. They're also taking bets right now on the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight. Mike Tyson was shirtless earlier in the week with some fans. Looks fucking shredded, dude. Uh, even at 57 years old, you can bet on that. NBA playoffs are about to start. NHL playoffs are about to start. It's tons of stuff to bet on over at mybookie.com. Just make sure to use that promo code Drinking Bros to double that first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Next up, Scotland 
is stupid. A new Scottish law that criminalizes the stirring up of hatred against some groups has triggered a debate far beyond its borders, pitting human rights activists who say it's needed against a rising tide of harassment and violence against conservative celebrities and politician, uh, politicians who say the law threatens free speech. Scotland's law enacted last week makes it uh, a imprisonable offense to incite hatred on the basis of race, religion, transgender identity, sexual orientation, age, or disability. So you can't say retard in Scotland anymore. Really? I guess. Is that new? I'm, I'm going to, well, I said disability, so I'm definitely going to go try and see if I can get arrested there. Can you say the N-word over there? Because I would imagine it's all white. Well, that would be race, I would imagine, yeah. Okay. They, all, they did invent golf and exclude black people from playing it for a while. So, so what do they do there? Not, you know? Not play. Not play, I guess? Yeah. Uh, go to St. Andrews. It's yeah, yeah. Scotland's law enacted last week makes it, uh, uh, you're going to jail, kids. Um, and it says if... Uh, it's intended to stir up hatred because of their membership of that group. Uh, then it's a criminal offense. So how do you know that? How, no. how, how can you glean intent from somebody saying something? Like, oh, you said the word retard. You're clearly trying to stir up violence or hatred of retarded people. Like, okay, cool, man. That's a weird leap in logic there, frankly. Yeah. Um, like, well, it, it's, it's very bizarre, to be honest. And it's another one. This is the J.K. Rowling law, I think they're calling it, because she misgenders people all the time. Well, she doesn't believe she's like, doesn't hey, fuck play this, the tranny bullshit. bullshit. Yeah, she's a billionaire, so she can do what she wants. Um, <clears throat> but this, this is the when when hate crime legislation first started decades ago. This is the slippery slope that people were warning about. Mm -hmm. That once you start to break people into categories and say that a crime is worse because it's against somebody else, like that, the inevitable result of this is that you it becomes thought police, right? Yeah. Like you're not allowed, because I, I say this all the time, talking is thinking. And if somebody's trying to control what you say, they're kind of trying to control what you think. That's how that works. It's uh, unconscionable nonsense. But it's all of the UK now. Ireland passed their laws, mm -hmm. UK passed their laws, or I'm sorry, England passed their laws, and Scotland passed theirs now. So basically the entire UK has fucking anti-hate speech laws, which is insane to me. I mean, like... What the fuck? But this is where the entire world is headed, including us. I mean, we just had uh, the Misfit Patriot on. Um, and FBI has shown up to, to people's houses over Facebook posts. I don't think we're that far away from that in our country. Um, Biden goes another four. They'll enact something like this over here for sure. They can try. Just it's don't crazy. don't show up at my house because it's something I said on the Internet. Because that's going to be a bad fucking day. <laughs> I mean, for real, that's just not going to work out. Yeah, man, this is, uh, this is a wild one. What are the people in Scotland saying over this? Uh, well, it's split in half. You know, people that own cats are in favor of it, and people that don't aren't. That's how it no works. No shit. Um, the okay. te and here's what this fucking Gaylord uh, PM there said, like a, or not PM, I'm sorry, a, a MP. He said, the test is that it has to be threatening or abusive to someone, or it has to, ca or it has to cause them fear or alarm. And then he goes on to say that's a very high threshold. I'm sorry. Somebody can just say they've been caused alarm, mm -hmm. right? Like words are literal violence. Maybe you've heard that fucking phrase before, stochastic terrorism or whatever gay shit people are saying now. Like this is just the legal version of that. Now somebody could say, hey, uh, this white dude misgendered me and it felt like he, I felt like he was killing me, literally. I'm like, oh, well, you got to go to jail, white man. Like, yeah. All right, cool. Let's do this. I guess we're just going to go to fucking war then. You know, it's interesting. Um, I'll be looking forward to the first... Uh, case that's actually prosecuted over mm. there for something like this because then you can apply that to what's probably going to happen in a lot of these places but yeah dude this is what's happening all over the fucking world this isn't shocking to me uh, at all it's shocking that the people of Scotland put up with it mm. but I don't know how to stop it or, or how they're going to correct it uh, even if they are has this been passed? Um, yes oh it has? Yeah, yeah. okay um, good yeah. luck. And I, it, it, it passed a while back. It just uh, it was enacted last week, I think. Okay. Is when it went into effect. Well, keep your thoughts to yourself, kids, if you're over in Scotland, or you could end up in the pokey. All right? Shut the fuck up forever. Just, just scream it. Like, have a pillow and scream it in, into a pillow there. 
uh, instead of posting it online. Or write it down and burn it. Yeah. You know. That's a fun game. Uh, we can take this all the way back to the 1800s. Yeah, just burn everything, dude. Get rid of all of it. Uh, next up, AdWise, we got BioproteinTech.com. Promo code Drinking Bros is going to get you $30 off your first order. Huge fan of these guys over at BioPro Plus. What is it? HGH, human growth hormone, uh, the hormone that is responsible for uh, workout recovery, uh, even good sleep and some sex. It goes down typically after the age of 35. Wouldn't know, not there yet. Um, taking it precautionary right now, just in case. Because that age is coming up right around the bend for me. Uh, comes in a nice little vial. You get 30 of them, get shipped to your house. Boom, you pop one underneath your tongue. You'll feel a little sting to it. So you know that it's working. Uh, best part about it is no needles, no doctor visits. Uh, you don't even have to hop on FaceTime or any of that shit and pretend to talk to a doctor because none of that's fun or even helpful. And let's face it, who are those fucking people to begin with? Uh, none of that is necessary. You can go to bioproteintech.com, use the promo code DRINKINBROS for $30 off your first order. Uh, guys who've used it have found results in days instead of months. Uh, it's been proven by physicians and, uh, and tested since 2009. So you know that it's good. Uh, it's also great for your skin too, although we've been raging. Uh, and I didn't take any with me on the fucking plane, dude, because of the liquid loss. So I gotta get back on it. Chances are I look like shit right now. I can't even see myself. But uh, big fan of this. You and I have been taking it for uh, roughly six months and, uh, and the, the changes are, are definitely noticeable. Mm. I feel good in the morning. Got a lot of energy, mm -hmm. a lot of pep in my step. Yep. Head on over to bioproteintech.com. Use the promo code Drinking Bros for $30 off. Click the link in the audio description or on YouTube as well, and it'll send you right there. Huge fan of those guys. Uh, next up, uh, news-wise, we got the, the woman who was fucked to death. Mm. I love this story. This one's one of my favorites. I'm going to bump it up because I, I love it. An American woman was found dead in Spain over the weekend. She took a pill in Ibiza, I think, is what happened. She did. And uh, it didn't work out well for her. No. Or Avicii. Or Avicii. R.I.P. No. R.I.P. Uh, and uh, authorities believe her death was the result of an extreme sexual encounter gone terribly wrong. The body of the 44-year-old woman has not been named publicly, was found in an apartment in the Plaza Enrique Garcia Herrera in uh, Malaga? La Pinon? Malaga. Yeah, whatever, dude. What the fuck do you give me all these? He writes the news, dude. I think on the road you give me these intentionally. It's just the name of the fucking place, bro. Dude, Plaza Enrique Garcia Herrera, yeah, it's Malaga, a, it's La a, Pinon de la Maga? Yeah. Fuck that. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not fluent anymore, all right? Need to get back on Babel. Uh, the victim's 50-year-old uh, husband, who is also American, was arrested in connection with her death, which uh, police believe occurred accidentally in an intimate context. Sources told the news outlet that I can't pronounce. The case was initially investigated as uh, gender-based violence, but was upgraded to homicide due to evidence indicating extreme risky sex sexual behavior. They added the woman's husband appeared on Monday in the local uh, courts where the judge ordered him held without bail. Yeah. Now, the investigation is ongoing, and so far, neither the media or the courts have released any information about what, what particular extreme slash risky sexual behavior may have taken place. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, we have no choice but to speculate wildly about what it may have been. Okay. So, I'm going uh, facial. Mm -mm. I'm going, death I, from I, that? Choking her to death? Oh, you mean like fucking her face? Yes. That's hard. It's, what was it's hard to fuck uh, somebody up like that. Remember that porn star that Jared dated and we got the, yeah. the clips? There was a, 
Was it extreme uh, facial? facial abuse? That's it. Facial com, abuse. Yeah. Com. So, but but to kill somebody that way, you would have to basically do what happened in a few good men, mm -hmm. where you uh, overstimulated the esophagus, esophagus, and a bunch of acid poured up through it. it yeah. there, there's some. I can't remember what the name. You can go watch the goddamn movie. Um, by the way, Jack Nicholson's character is the hero of that movie. Sure is. Um, that super rare though, fucking somebody's face and fucking them up. I don't know that that's gonna play. If you did it over and over again. Let's say you popped a Viagra and went. I mean, if you held it there until she just died. I mean, but maybe, just but kept oh, 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 like over and over and over again. Maybe. Because how else would it happen? I don't. Uh, I was thinking like panel? Drildo, panel, yeah. Drildo, panel, the bit slips off. Uh, give Chippy the bit, by the way. If yeah. You don't, uh, if give you haven't, Chippy the bit. Yeah, and maybe he didn't give Chippy the bit. Maybe right? that's what it was. So maybe the Drildo came off and he just like tore up her back oh, or something God like that. Damn, I don't know. Dude. Maybe he was using uh, a saw blade. Who knows, right? But I think it's probably drill dough related, if I had to guess. Now, I don't know that much about Spain. They may be too poor to have uh, electric power tools. I don't no, know. No, they have it. It's just got a third prong that you got to plug in. It's uh, a European you, outlet. Yeah, but Spain's economy is really bad. It is. So does the average... I mean, this is an American dude. Fair enough. But, yeah. Like, so I guess maybe a drill dough is probably not on the table unless it was part of the airbnb that they rented you were uh, come, come down to la hacienta we've got drill dose yeah. and it's got a picture of the different <laughs> drill dose you can scroll through them and pick which one you want i think that would be a good selling point i would definitely stay in a place like that i look if it's his wife though do you fuck her to death with a drill dough? i think you would know i think facial you're into it at that point everything's kind of thrown out the window that's not what a, fa a facial is when you come on a woman's face no no, no. the the facial, face fucking yes yes but i'm talking about extreme facial.com throat fucking yeah that's just what say I'm that about. then then talk say the words that mean that then motherfucker i'm saying it's it's gotta be in the mouth it's gotta be pounded in there over and over and over again and i think he got caught up in the moment maybe some drugs were involved and uh she couldn't speak you know, I think we may have audio of this. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. This is where Bob would play the Meek Mill. Sure is, but he's not here. Thing. So there's nothing we can do. Yeah, he'll, well, we'll do it on Monday. Ah, I'll have three stories where that video or that audio plays on Monday. I guarantee you. I don't you. think we yeah. need it. And it's not about need. But that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Otherwise, let's say it was a drill dough. Uh, or let's say you were doing anal or whatever. Or maybe he like tied a rope around her neck and hung her accidentally or so something. So that, that's possible. Yeah. Um, or he choked her to death. You know, but there's there's also a lot of women that like to be choked. Maybe you just took it too far. Can you not hear that? Yeah, I can hear. Oh, it's Delco playing into the mic. We're on YouTube. We're on YouTube right now. They're gonna pull the gun. Nah, it's videos. fine. Ah. It's not copy. It's not copyrighted. <laughs> Drake should Jesus make Christ. Drake should make a song out of that. Well, who uh, wait? Does he hate Diddy? Who hates Diddy? Everybody. 50, 50 Cent should. 50, Fifty Cent should make a song out of it. Um, but yeah, uh, my money is on choking or. Extremefacial.com. Probably. Not or he, sponsor. he could have been dragging her behind a truck or something to do, you know? Uh, man, I, I just, I, I want to guess that she couldn't say stop. So it's got to be choking or, or. That's why all of my safe yeah. words are in sign language. All of them. Are they? Yep. Yep. It's like sign language or Morse code. You blink a certain message out to me. I'm like, sorry, could you go back mm -hmm. and say that last word over again? Oh, she's blinking desperately like because she's running out of oxygen. Mine is sunrise. Mm. Sunrise is my, my sign language uh, code there. God, this advertiser's not going to be happy with us on this next one. Um, oh, they, <laughs> they'll be fine. It's the wellness company, too. <laughs> Get some ivermectin just in case you almost kill your wife with your wiener. This is their copy, by the way. So before I say this, I want to preface it by saying that. Because the first line is, are you prepared for the unexpected? <laughs> Are you going to Spain anytime soon with your husband? Well, in a world where chaos seems to lurk around every corner, being prepared is no longer a choice. It's a necessity. That's where the wellness company comes in. Imagine having the peace of mind that you're equipped to handle any medical crisis. From tick bites to the latest pandemic, the wellness company's medical Emergency kit is your lifeline, packed with essential medications like ivermectin, emergency antibiotics, antivirals, and more. This kit is your ultimate preparedness solution. 
Maybe that's why she died is because they didn't have the kit and they weren't prepared. Yeah. So when, when somebody asks me, what, what should I do in the event of X? I always say before X happened is where all the work gets done. Yeah. Right. Know where the exits are, have a plan. And this is your plan, right? Like if you're going to Spain, you definitely want to get a kit of some sort. Sure do. And take that with you. The wellness company's team of renowned medical professionals includes uh, Dr. Drew Pinsky, Dr. James Thorpe, and Dr. Peter McCullough, uh, and a bunch of more truth-seeking doctors that have designed a kit that sets the gold standard for safety and prevention. Don't wait for the next crisis to strike. Visit twc.health slash drinking bros and use the promo code drinking bros for an exclusive 15% off discount. Prepare today and rest easy tomorrow at twc.health slash drinking bros and use that promo code drinking bros for 15% off. Next up, D'Anthony, we're skipping around all over the place today. Uh, we got the new normal uh, happening right now. And uh, that's, that's the abortion law. Uh, more and more states are putting the abortion law on the ballots this fall, including Arizona, which we talked about the other day. Well, now Carrie Lake has gotten in on the action uh, and she's blasting the abortion ban uh, that she was allegedly once thrilled about. Uh, the Arizona Supreme Court ruled Tuesday to reinstate a 160-year-old abortion ban and Republicans who previously backed it including Senate candidate Carrie Lake, immediately began flip-flopping it. Uh, the court overturned the 2022 law that allows for abortions until 15 weeks, paving the way for an 1864 ban, uh, which they're calling it, that prohibits the procedure in almost all cases except to save the life of the mother. Now, this one's interesting for me today uh, because Carrie Lake is pretty high profile. Mm -hmm. This is a big boy Senate seat that she's up for. Um, she's also a woman, though, and I'm sure she she cares about this as well. But to hear her come out against it uh, is is pretty interesting here. Now, I want to go back to something you said on uh, yesterday's show. Um, this is simply just on the ballot for people to mm -hmm. vote for. So this isn't passed into law. Right. Uh, all these articles that they're posting today um, have this clickbait title of the the hundred and six or the 1864 ban and all that other shit. But uh, this is simply just on the, the ballot in most of these states, and they're allowing people to vote on it. This has not been passed. Correct. Uh, it is interesting, though, that Carrie Lake is getting ahead of this. She knows this is wildly unpopular amongst women, uh, in particular white women in the suburbs. And uh, it's, it's interesting to hear her change her stance on this. Uh, what will Trump do in regards to this? Nothing. He, did, he already said what he's going to do. Everybody's been talking about a federal abortion ban for ever since Roe went down, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Trump has repeatedly said he's not going to do that because the issue is returned to the states where it belongs. Right. And then this this past week, conservatives were mad at him. What do you mean you're not going to ban abortion? Like, I never said I was going to ban abortion. Well, maybe he did. I don't know. No, he didn't. Uh, but, <clears throat> you know, the, the crux of all this was to send it back to the states. But from the, from the leftist perspective, you know, they're going to, capitalize on the politics of this obviously um oh let's see what because you, you've seen some memes out there probably already like you know what else is legal in 1864 is slavery <laughs> like all right cool man that's exactly a fucking parallel you piece of shit but uh it should go back to the states that's how this country was set up it's called federalism and it's the system of government we're in we're not in a uh uh democracy we're in a federalist republic right so um, that's, that's how that's supposed to work. Now, <clears throat> Democrats will make hay out of this now. Talk a lot of shit. Donald Trump is going to take your rights away. This isn't going to be a real country anymore. I think that's what Kamala Harris said at her fundraiser yesterday. Correct. That this might be the last quote unquote democratic election we ever have. If Trump wins, like my God, man, he was just, he just won a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and we still have what you call a democracy. What the fuck are you talking about? But anyways, then they will win every single one of these ballot measures. A abortion will not get outright banned in any state by the voters. It won't happen. Like the, the polling is pretty obvious on that. And it's already gone up in multiple red states, as I mentioned earlier in the week. Uh, and every single one has failed. 
to try to ban that shit. This is not going to happen, right? So then they'll say like, oh, we fucking won thanks to your help. Now we got to fucking win this state and this state. Right. And they'll just keep using it for fundraising. That's all it is. This yeah. Is, this is all canard. It's nonsense. But it is interesting to see this set up. I mean, uh, the, the way that this is headed for, for November really is immigration against abortion. Um, yeah, but this is I, I this could be a tactical error, to be honest, uh, for the left, because there isn't going to be anything about immigration on the ballot. So I can vote for the guy who handles the immigration problem and also vote for the issue of abortion in the way I want. Right. I don't think that is a, str a, a very smart strategy for the left, frankly. Well, uh, how do you think it'll play out with uh, let's let's take those white suburban voters, uh, women in the suburbs? Um, you go into the you know the the voting booth and you got 30 40 things to vote on there um do you think some of the 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 ones that swing independent a little bit will look at that measure and be like well shit, i don't want to vote for this therefore i'm going to vote for biden or democrats yeah but you that's the thing you've put it on the ballot now so you don't have to pick you don't have to pick Biden and abortion versus Trump and immigration. You could pick Trump and immigration and then abortion by itself. Well, here, here's why I ask is um, more and more of state Supreme Courts are putting this uh, voting for it to be in and then it's going to be voted on, you know, by the states mm -hmm. uh, in, in November. Why now? Like, again, if you're Arizona, if you're Republicans, why now? Why? Why have all these? Because this is Alabama now mm -hmm. that has popped up with the embryo thing. This is Arizona now that's popped up with this. Carrie Lake, you know, even came out again and, and just said, hey, dude, I, I don't want to agree with this and mm -hmm. everything else. DeSantis has got it on the ballot down there in Florida. Why even risk it with such an important election? Um, well, I mean, sometimes you just can't stop things from happening. You just right. think it's a, a time it, maybe, but also what I just, what I just said, which mm -hmm. is that instead of forcing people to choose Trump and immigration or Biden and abortion, you get to choose both technically, right? Like you can choose, I, I, I don't know that anybody would do this, but technically you could choose the open borders and against abortion. I don't think that's a position that anybody holds probably, yeah. but there are a lot of people who want, uh, immigration handled and also don't care about or want abortion rights. So that, that is a pretty easy one for me. And now the question is, um, <clears throat> what's motivating middle-class white suburban women right now? Um, I would think purchasing food and housing would be on the top of that list. That's what I think too, but I, I don't so, know. So which is like, I mean, put yourself inside the mind of, uh, you know, a, a, a mom in St. Louis or in uh, Columbus, Ohio, or in Pittsburgh or Pence or Philly, and you're watching your ability to feed your kids dwindle. You're watching illegal immigrants commit violent crimes all over the country. It's like, all right, well, I can vote. Now I have the option to both vote for Trump because he was dealing with those issues specifically and keep abortion legal in my state. Mm -hmm. So why would you, you don't, now, now you don't have to choose. Now I don't know that the Republicans are gonna be smart enough to make that point to people. They, they should have PACs running full-time ads about this right now. About, I, I, about, I agree, and that's like, what we haven't seen. Yeah, yeah but, but the Republicans suck at everything, right? They're terrible, not, not just at governing, they're terrible at winning elections too. Organization. So, yeah, they're, they're just retarded. So who knows what's gonna happen? I just told you what should happen and like, if you're out there and you want the country to get better, maybe have a chat with those uh, white suburban moms that you know. And say, hey, you know, you can fucking vote for common sense stuff and we're going to put this shit on the ballot, so don't worry about your rights. Yeah, It seems just, like a reasonable thing to do. When I see stories like this, the timing is always curious to me where I'm like, right now is the time you want to fucking do this? Um, because this happened back in 2022, right before the midterm elections, and it wasn't great. We were supposed to get this red wave. Mm. Didn't really <clears throat> happen. Barely holding on to, to Congress. Uh, and the timing of all of this is just shitty. Yeah. Um, so I, look, I don't blame her for, uh, for trying to get ahead of it. Uh, also don't know her personally and what her you know, personal stance is behind the scenes. Well, let's face it with any politician. Will we ever? Probably not. Uh, but the timing isn't great. And they're certainly going to air every fucking commercial, like you said, uh, into November with this fucking bullshit. And I wouldn't be surprised if they just started airing commercials with like a box full of coat hangers. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> just saying, yeah. good luck. You can either put your coat on this mm -hmm. or you can put your unwanted baby on it. Your call. But we'll see.
Uh, now's the point of the show. We get to the drinking bro of the week. You can submit your drinking bro of the week to drinkingbros.com. While you're there, grab some merch. Bro box is out. Uh, when's the last day for that for uh, for this month? Are we already pass it? Um, I don't know. Actually, I think it's the fifteenth. Fifteenth? Yeah, okay. I think so. Uh, so you have until the fifteenth to get that bro box. Uh, comes to your doorstep every single month over there. Usually three to four items in there, and then we nuke it. We usually don't uh, ever sell them again. Got the uh, Olive Garden t-shirts, got the Hard AF seltzer merch on the site. Uh, got a ton of new stuff over there. Merch site is up. It's back. It's better than ever. Uh, grab your Drinking Bros and Hard AF seltzer merch over there. Also, that's where you can submit for Drinking Bro of the Week. Gets emailed to us right on air. No, you don't have to buy anything to get Drinking Bro of the Week. Uh, separate submission form and uh, super easy. Just fill it out and it comes to us live. Uh, this one is submitted by Jeffrey Stellmaker from Kansas. Uh, listener since the, the beginning. The very, very beginning. Uh, and right now he is nominating 2-5 uh, Cav. Deceased. Deceased. It says. Yeah. Uh, I'm visiting for my OIF2 20th reunion, and I know that they always deserve the recognition of those who fought and survived, myself included, Sodder City. Uh, I'm glad to have served with these absolute brothers. Uh, 4404 will always stand out in history. Uh, shoot him in the face. Yeah, so that was the last American unit in Sodder City before my unit got there. Oh, really? Yeah. Shit. It was abandoned all of 2005 and six, basically. So they were the last, they walked out of that place and then we walked into it. It was, uh, yeah, not good territory. So yeah. How gnarly was it? It's the most dangerous place on earth. I would say uh, that's, that's what I've, uh, I've heard over the years <clears throat> and, uh, we get a lot of submissions about solder city. Mm. Um, so yeah, uh, cheers to you, Jeffrey. Thank you for the submission. Thank you guys at home for listening and tuning in. Day in and day out. Go to iTunes, rate the show a five-star, leave a quick review. Also, head on over to Spotify. It's just a five-star, and you can walk away. For D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is Drinking Bros Fake News. Good night, everyone.